Dude, okay, right. hold on. Hold on. Before we get into the story, so we're back. Gary Roberts on TV. Travis Bajan. Still got hair particles on me. Uh, Beauty and the Beast back at you. Episode, Beauty and the Beast. Episode 139. <laughs> Bro, okay. Uh, real quick. Guys, just for the audience here, uh, we, this is a co-production between Travis Bajan and Gary Roberts. We're going to alternate how these uh episodes come out uh, episode one would have been my channel episode two would have been his channel back and forth we encourage you every every title will say like hashtag one two three four five six seven eight if you notice the numbers being alternating go to the other channel so you don't get all because you're probably if you're just logging in right now and you came from the last episode on my channel you're probably off and missing some really good shit. So good go shit. go to the other channel to get the rest of the full story. And just get used to subscribe to both channels. Because, I mean, here's the thing. With all these different arm wrestling channels out there, we all want to support each other. If ever rising tides uh, rise all ships, right? So it would just be better for the sport and everyone. If you subscribe to everyone's channel and every night click and play, go to bed, let the videos play, auto play, right? The money's coming from someone else. We got to game the system here. Play those, play the ads, play the videos, go to bed and just shit, put that on auto play for someone's channel all night long because what do you care? You got unlimited internet, ah. right? So hey, subscribe man. to Tra Travis Bajan Unfiltered and then Arm TV. Subscribe to both. Correct? Correct. Ask okay. some questions. We're going to answer the questions. Ask the questions. Before you get into this, when we, when we left off at the story, CrossFit is no longer – you're no longer employed with Just CrossFit. Just a quick, a quick recap is that I'm in this business with CrossFit. I'm rolling. The game of arms comes. I decide to take that on as well. I become an average employee at CrossFit over time. I end up losing my job at CrossFit right around the time that – the game of arms is big enough that we're going to start the WAL. I get a gig to, to, uh, to run a WL tournament right at the same time I lose my CrossFit job. So now I'm, I do that job for WAL. I get a better contract with the WAL for the next year and eight months. And then that comes to a halt. Oh a three month severance package in order to work these supercross events before at the end of June, the money, the, the WL championships is happening. So there's another $20,000 potentially there. If you can win, that will maybe carry me on another couple months, but really life is into me again. I already kind of rescued myself after losing the CrossFit job, and now I'm, lo I'm losing a WL job. Got a three-month severance okay. package, and we're here smack okay. into week four. Okay, I got to ask you a question. Yes. When I, I just watched my wife, when I started get back into the sport, I was like, okay, we got to watch Pulling John. So I had her watch Pulling John, and uh, a little side note, when the movie ends, she goes, man, that – John Brzezink, he seems like a you know really nice guy. And she's like, that Travis Bajan, man, he's got an ego. <laughs> you married one of them, Gary. You married one of them. It's okay. It usually takes me, it'll take me two weeks of hanging out with her, playing with bubs, and before you know it, she'll yeah. say, Gary, yeah. he's not that bad. Ah. That's a, that's exactly what I say. I say, listen. <laughs> Travis Bajan, you know, on TV, he's one guy, but I'm like, when you hang out with him, he'll find a way to get you to fall in love with him. It always <laughs> happens. And the ladies, like, previous, all I've always seen the ladies, are all, like, you're very respectful. Hey, ma'am. And, you know, you just have a way with the, with the girls. Anyways, what I wanted to say was when I finished pulling John and they put up that little title, this is Travis Bajan went on to be the highest paid arm wrestler of all time or – Something like, is that still the case? Like, I don't, I don't recall know. any I don't other know. stories of yeah. you. Like, you seem to always find a way to get the big, the big duck. Hits. Yeah, I think there's no doubt that I used to be the leader. I'm not sure now how much money that Devin makes, right? And I don't know how much the PAL champion makes. 
other than the fifty thousand dollars plus like the twenty five and five thousand dollar hits leading up to the fifty thousand. So, you know, these guys are starting to make some money and the coronavirus hit, so we canceled Supercross. So there is a chance that in two thousand twenty will be the first year in twenty years that Travis Bajan may not be the highest paid arm wrestler. So and you're saying so I also what? could be questioning whether Devin made an obscene amount of money last year or the year before. But the only good thing is, so did I. So it's all good. Yeah. Like it's all. So good. what years do, can you confidently say, from what year to what that you that you know you were the man? Yeah, I can't imagine that. Just from the year 2000, when I started running our wrestling tournaments and promoting myself, even in a small way, where I would have 15 or 20 sponsors paying for $350 plane tickets for the same tournament. You know, that, that was the big hustle, right? Was how many sponsors can I get that are willing to pay for a plane ticket and willing to pay with a check after they get the receipt, right? Because only one of them can actually pay for it with their credit card. The others have to see the invoice has been paid and reimburse the money. So that's the first way I used to sell sponsor money. And, you know, from then on, it's always been, the 30, the 40s, and then, you know, we got some good contracts with Biotech. We did really good with um, with the WAL. Marvin Cohen has had a few events that were just uh, super amazing. I made a I made $75,000 running the, the NFL arm wrestling show in Las Vegas a year, two years yeah. ago. So there's always been some hits enough that I'm I can say pretty confidently that yeah, I probably made a little more money. Now, those other oh. people, they had jobs too. So, you know, they may yeah. still live better. So I was surprised a few episodes ago you, you said, like, not many arm wrestlers in the world. I Let's say take out Europe. I, I know Igor and Asana, I know that they were paying guys some pretty decent money. But, like, in the U.S., Canada – yeah, I was surprised at how many people you said arm wrestlers have not made over, let's say, five, five thousand in prize money. It's not. I'm gonna go. Like let's go. In, before let, WAL, you were saying like it was pretty low. Yeah, I mean, let's let's be brutally honest and say that there are less than one percent of the population that has ever won a five hundred dollar purse, ever. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a. Because that's a pretty – for you to pay $500 for one person and have multiple weight classes is a huge tournament. I mean, yeah. you know, and I, you know, I don't know if it ever will change. Maybe it won't change. But the good thing is is that the 1% has been able to increase the money, you know, to a somewhat of a livable, you know, situation. The reason I bring it up, because I, I think my best year – with arm tv before taxes was 77,000 was the best year i had so it's like that was decent but then you had to pay rent so it became very important to me the more promoters i could find that would help with hotel and airfare changed my income like if i had to pay for every hotel every airplane every rental car suddenly you know boom, that shit gets cut in half, right? It's like, yeah, it's so it, it became integral to like, and the thing is like people used to, I was wondering where I ranked in arm wrestlers because I I was not an arm wrestler, but, but amateur, but I still found a way to make a living in arm wrestling, which I thought would give people like, hey, if Gary Roberts can find a way to make a living in arm wrestling, maybe help give him the key to arm wrestling because I, I, would, I would love to make it where 50 of us are making a living at arm wrestling. But sadly, yeah, it never happened. Every time we run an event now or we do a promotion, it needs to be to promote industry, not just to make some brand, you know, spectacular to a yeah. small group. Like, that, I was telling um, Steve Kaplan that a long time ago. I'm like, when you let the world uh, have their own arm wrestling clubs, their own teams, and run tournaments underneath your umbrella it creates industry right that's when you got people creating arm wrestling straps and t-shirts and yeah. arm wrestling tables 
when you just have eight people coming to arm wrestle each other and it's the same eight people and it just doesn't promote industry. I'm not saying it doesn't promote your brand. I'm just yeah. telling you that for Travis Bajant being a guy who can do multiple aspects of arm wrestling, it's good if arm wrestling has a thriving industry and yeah. that there is work, no matter how small it is or regionally it is. I mean, if you take away some of you guys who like were doing some, I mean, where is the sport of arm wrestling? If you take away 10 of these names who are like really actively doing things for arm wrestling, if you take them out of the picture, where are we today? It's really, would be really interesting conversation to like delve into that. But anyways, I, one more thing. I was watching Michael Todd's podcast and he said where he was, he was really sad about his wife having to go back to work. And, uh, he said well, what, uh, his wife had to go back to work. Yeah. What does that mean? You mean because of the coronavirus? Well, he was saying he was feeling down on himself because he wasn't able to provide for his family like he used to. I guess he's never. Training. What are you talking about? He has never, ever been able to provide for his family through arm wrestling. No, 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 no. Just with everything, personal training, sponsorships, arm. He was just saying in general. It was a point where the missus had to go back to work. Like, did he point out was, that he is a lazy piece of crap, and that's why he oh, he don't do stuff like oh, that? Tell him to my, get a job, get a oh, real job. Oh my, no, Man. My what I'm trying to get at is, he said that in 30 years he's made three hundred thousand dollars, which is ten thousand a year on average in arm wrestling. So Fake that's news. what that's what he said. Ten k a year. For 30 years, on average. Fake news. Five, yeah. maybe five years of his life, he may have made 10 grand. So take that 300 and take it down to 50,000 for his career. That's his uh, number. Uh, That's his uh, number. Do you think, you think I'm just going to let you say crazy stuff like that just because Michael Todd's your boy? Just because you think Michael Todd can beat me, you're crazy if you think Michael Todd can beat me. I mean, I, dude, I. I don't know what your state of fitness is. I'm not afraid of Michael Todd or Devin Laird. I don't care how many times you say their names. So maybe maybe Michael Todd is including sponsorship in that number. Michael Todd is including his mama giving him his birthday money. He's including his ex-wife's pension. He's including everything. And he's still, <laughs> the number adds up to $61,000 in his whole <laughs> life. Oh, shit. We're getting unfiltered here. We're getting unfiltered. We're, we're getting ratings. Ratings wait, going wait, hold on. up. Hold on. Hold on. You, you were – I should have started off this conversation by saying Michael Schmod has a podcaster. Yeah. Or right. Ty, Tychel or Toddly, Toddly Michaels. I'm, you know, yeah. trying to, I should have changed the name of up. Damn it. Do something else. Get, Don't ever say them two names to me again. They fake I, champs. I, I, fake champ. I'm the real champ. Oh my God. Speaking Ezra, of Ezra, go get the hammers. Bring them over here right now. <laughs> oh shit. Speaking Ezra, of Go a, get the hammers, bring them over here right now. I they, we're jumping ahead because I we're the hammers haven't happened in use. When you're talking about Cooper tires, do you hold hammers at this point? I got That's so it. many hammers at that time, I don't even man. Everywhere I go, there's hammers everywhere I go in this house. No, no everywhere way. I go in this house. Hammer. This hammer right here. Let's see. Oh, this oh, hammer shit. right here. Oh, this is shoot. the last true hammer of the WAL. Somebody's dropping the hammer now. Somebody's shit. dropping the hammer. Dude. Oh, shit. We're getting hate mail. The comments are going. The comments are going. Ba, 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 I forgot to tell you that on one of the lists, I didn't go over the list of potential names, but somebody's posted, hey, do under the table with Travis Bajan and Gary Roberts, arm wrestling show. And I'm like, since I've got back into the sport, what is all this under the table jokes? I don't like, want to talk about it because I got to say your boys' names again. But they started that stuff. You could change the name. Change. Let's find a moniker. That we could say Michael Todd without saying What's Michael, Michael Todd. What's Michael Todd's wife's name? Rebecca. Rebecca and Jody have been underneath the table <laughs> making a mockery of the sport for another year and a half. 
When I was in the sport, was there a king's move? Did you didn't Mac tail and uh, somebody yeah. have that? See, they had yeah. that weird. That was it. We didn't know what it was, and then as soon as somebody we liked or we thought was cool did it, it got a name. Before, I never, you, I never so, heard of the king's move. Who named it? Um, I believe I could be wrong, but I believe Devin Larratt named it. after George Ozakowicz's style of arm wrestling. So Devin Larratt King's moves? Devin a- Larratt, no, Devin Larratt does King move now. Yes, that's all he does. So let me ask you a question because I, I, we're getting off topic, which is fine because we got plenty of time. Content, let it eat, <laughs> let it eat. So when I came back into the sport, I've just seen so much conversation on King's move. I'm, I'm so confused about it. So if, if, if you're having a practice and somebody comes to practice and they're new and you're starting to coach them how to arm wrestle, is, is King's move something you would talk to them about? Like, you'd yeah. be like, oh, this is what we do. Like, this is well, you would start the last off with, resort. Say, you would start off with introducing them to it in a way like, hey, we have a couple jackasses doing this other thing. They call it the King's move. And then you would show them exactly what they were doing. Not necessarily so that you can master it, but that you can understand that some of these weirdos are actually implementing it. So George Zockwitz, he's relying on a lock. And I see him, he puts his, he puts his tricep flat on the thing and his lock. But he doesn't go under the table. Well, like he does. This. He does if you're strong enough to get him underneath there. You just have to be really good. The problem is, is that when really good guys do the king's move, they only have to be under the table at an absolute desperation. And then after that, they can be right parallel with it. And because they're just talented individuals as well, that – They've taken it. They've taken that approach, but make no mistake about it. Right before they lose, or right before it gets to the quarter inch mark, they are in desperation underneath the table. So I thought coming back in the sport and how much I've heard of Devin Laird's name being tossed around, I thought he was pretty much unbeatable. So it's a little surprising. No, he hasn't even would, won a match. I don't even think you, he's won they, a match. That you would say he does the king's move. So he's beatable or not? Um, like. I, who's who's the best arm wrestler in wall at the moment in that weight class? Uh, I think it is a – It's a, I think it's Michael Todd, right? I mean – So it is Michael Todd. It's not Devin Laird. Uh, I Todd mean, Michael beat him. him. Yeah, Michael beat him last time. Michael so did – okay. I haven't watched that match, so I got to go review. I got to, yeah. Okay, so, so – but you were the champ. You had hammers. I'm confused. When – what time frame were you the champ? So I was a champ in from 2004 to 2017. No, left, wall, or I'm sorry, wall, wall, 2014 wall. to 2017 left-handed and 2016 right-handed. Second place, 14, 15, and seven, or no, 17, I got third place. Okay, right. so you were just talking trash about Michael Todd. Are you saying you can beat Michael Todd? Like, well, yeah. I don't so in 2016, the winner got twenty thousand dollars, and I won it. In 2017, six weeks before the tournament, Steve Kaplan cancels the tournament and gives me ten thousand dollars to run the tournament at a reduced state, and I only gave away a thousand dollars. So to oh, me, shoot. 2017 is a complete wash. Like a so joke. Who, who won 2017? Michael Todd beat Dave Chafee. But it was, okay. a, you know, it was, it was, it was good. But they were both kind of ready. I was working like a dog the whole time. Okay. The whole time. So I, I want to get back more to the hammers on a later episode. But yeah, I bring it up because people in the commenters they keep saying, "When is Travis coming back?" And uh, you know, well, now this we're is doing where this story. Game. This is where this story is going to lead to, right? It's going to lead from. If you remember the question that you asked three episodes ago was why isn't Travis Bajan pulling the WAL? Oh yeah. I forgot. Okay, and so we're we started, in. we started to embark on how I got uh, hired. Oh, the creation uh, of it. Uh, the two years of running the events, the high point of doing a bunch of money and entry fees, the low point of having them still lose money from the production side and the prize money side. 
Uh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. So, so now, I kind of forgot. Now we are in week four of 19 of the Supercross events. Okay. I know now. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Before we go on with the story, just to finish up that little side side hustle we had there. If some were to magically change right now and you could arm wrestle, are, are you in arm wrestling shape? Are you in promoter shape? Like, what is Travis am, Bajan? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm three weeks away from bouncing any of them bums. <laughs> so you really, you're not just like talking, oh, like you really no. could I'm, walk we're training, into, we're training every day around here. So you could beat Michael Todd and Devin Lair, or you would. Yeah. Hey, every single day, twice on Sunday. <laughs> oh, so for the record, uh, the, I do not have the same opinions as Travis. I'm impartial. I love Devin Laird. I love Michael Todd, and I love Travis Bajan. Don't send me any hate mail that I have any favoritism. He is my partner on the show, but our opinions can differ, and I remain impartial in anything that's going on right now. Because let me I'm, see you. Let me on, see you disrespect I, me when we're all together. But what I'm saying That'll be the is, end of this show. The thing is about Michael Todd and why I got to say that, because I, can, I know Michael Todd's feelings can get hurt. I, I, no. <laughs> and no. I don't want to – the most, wanna, Not the most unhappy person in the world. He could never <laughs> let his feelings get hurt. So, Michael Todd, you must know I adore you <laughs> and don't take any of this last 10 minutes of conversation towards Were you in personal. Michael Todd's wedding, Gary? I was there. I was there. Was you in the wedding in a tux? No, I was I was at this first wedding. I wasn't at the last one. I was at the first wedding, too, in a tuxedo. I was a groomsman. Yeah, I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't. was. So well, don't you tell guys... me nothing about loving Michael Todd, okay? I'm just saying, okay, there's your dad. I'm just saying, are you, yeah. where, where, are you guys friendly? I don't want to. I mean, listen, a father-son relationship. I'm Michael Todd's daddy. Oh, my God. When I see okay. Michael Todd, he treats me accordingly. Because I noticed when I watched Neil Pinko's podcast and all of you guys were on it, it was a little, you know, there's a little. What you talking about? I didn't feel nothing but love. I didn't feel nothing I'm but a, love. There's, there's definitely something. You're definitely <laughs> competitors. That's, let's just say, all of you guys. Okay. So let's I can get back say, to I can simply say without reservation that I hate Michael Todd and Devin Larratt, okay? And I'm the real champ. And you got the, the hammers to prove it. Who's, does anyone have more hammers? Who of has course not. Hammers? Of course not. Them fake hammers they got now, you can't even get one unless they invite you. Like, these hammers I got, anybody could come get them. And I didn't oh. lose no weight. Devin Laird's got a bunch of hammers too, but he lost a bunch of weight. I mean, come on. What do you mean he lost weight? He's got 220-pound hammers. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, he's not, uh, he don't have the super heavyweight hammer. I mean, you uh, can't lose weight and get hammers and say you're the best arm wrestler in the world. Come on. I don't love those guys. Okay, so I'm watching Uncle John's podcast, and uh, I'm in the chat, and it's perfect. This is, you get interactive, and, uh, you know, they're get, reviewing your super match with uh, Devin, and I say, hey, you told me in the show, you're like, hey, I bitch slapped those guys. I and, cry. Uh, Listen, I'm crawling over guys like that to get to the fight. Well, anyways, Devin says you're not to be trusted. You've never your, – your word doesn't mean anything. And I want to know what you think about that. I know he didn't say that. He didn't say that? Of course not. What did he say? He said, Travis is the greatest arm wrestler I've ever lived. I can't mess with him. What are you talking about? I watched the show. <laughs> the guy was the most respectful guy you could be. He knows what's up. Devin knows what's up. Devin knows what's up. He can't beat me, and he knows it. <laughs> yeah, but he it ain't. I mean, here's the thing. I don't even think that – I don't even consider Devin a, like a serious rival. Like, he's – He's a, he's a sideshow, like the intercontinental champion. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not the heavyweight champion. He's the intercontinental champion. Whatever, like, it. He's the Tito Santana. He's not Hulk Hogan and, and Andre the Giant and us. You know what I mean? Like, he's <laughs> on, the other, on the other side. I don't – I'm going to be 100% transparent. You and I have not talked about this at all. 
But I want people to know that through this podcast, if I can keep back in the day of RMTV, this is what I used to do. Create excitement for, you know, shit. I'm like, it's 100%. I purposely went on there when I heard they were going to review. Well, I went. I wanted to hear what he said about arm bet. But when well, I heard listen, they were going to, before you even start, you have to know that that's what they're trying to do. I mean, my man, there's a lot of matches that they could have reviewed. Yeah, we have arm wrestled oh. 100 times left-handed. They found the one time where he tied. <laughs> that's the one that they could. That's the best they could find. <laughs> So, like, every, so when I get on Uncle John's thing, I want him to review the other 517 <laughs> matches that we have pulled left-handed <laughs> and say, bam, maybe bam. How about bam? How do you want to explain that one? Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> bam. And then, <laughs> bam. Bam. Yeah. Bam. And then I want to know how many times that I'm raising my hands and that guy is in the crowd or he didn't eat for three weeks. So he pulled in the two twenties. I mean, I'm just saying it is awful funny that the major fucking clip is a tie against the guy that you never beat in your whole life. I mean, and then he says, two million people watch this. And I'm like, why don't the two million people watch the three videos that pop up right after that of me just easing my man down like it's Sunday morning? I mean, I don't know. Excuse me for not having the same perspective. So, so uh, I – accidentally said that I almost think of you more as a promoter than an arm wrestler in the earlier episode. I, no, I, yeah, that, you say that all the time. I mean, that just because you're – Just like just you cause you're crushing good. Dabo, just like you was crushing Dabo the other day, that thing rattles right off of your tongue with the greatest of ease. Well, it's because you're good at promoting. You're in that conversation, and not everyone is the best promoter in the world and best arm There's wrestler in no the world. There's no money which, in arm wrestling. That's why you have to promote. For some reason, I can get somebody to give me a thousand and two thousand dollars to come help them with their show, right? To be the little special guest. But it's like a big problem if I just pay myself and do my own tournament. It's like, oh, Travis can't keep all the money. Well, no. what? It's better if Gary takes your money and then adds it up and gives it to me for being a special guest. It shouldn't be any different, yeah. right? So right. I learned a long time ago that I wanted it to be cool and that uh, there's a lot of work that we still need to do. I don't know if I can do much more work to be a better arm wrestler. I could do the same stuff that I know how to do at a more frequent basis and probably get really sharp again. But I don't think that I'm really going to be challenged for the next 30 years in my life. I think I'll be challenged more trying to produce something that is just you know really really cool um, yeah i so reading some of the comments you do get a lot of hate with people that think you just want to make money it's like what why do you diss travis bajan for <laughs> wanting to make money i don't get it because it's like you're trying to make a living trying to support a family why wouldn't you want to make money and if you can make money like, why are you dissing Travis? Because he can get paid. I don't get it. It's very strange. Is it, very strange. Is it just because they don't like you as a person? Well, that they're I think hating that it's on a good – I think that the, uh, the character the character is uh, a negative, uh, mean guy, right? I mean, I don't know. I think that sometimes the negative, mean guy can be so negative and good and mean that it can somehow get some love, too. And I think that it has metamorphosized into yeah. the villain that is so villainish that um, he ends up being not as much of a villain as the real villains, right? Because he's cooler and he can somehow get some love. So I think that I have more fans than I ever had my whole life. There's no doubt. But the haters are always there. And I think it has a lot to do with they have love for someone else and – uh, hating me is is they think on that person's mind so 
if you love Don Underwood or you love Devin or you love whoever your guy is, and then the video shows me just raping them, then you see them crying about the false starting and the elbow fouling and whatever their reason is, then it's easy to jump right on that bandwagon with your buddy um, and let the hater aid happen. Because I get a lot of my good fans want to hate on Michael Todd and Devin by because they're using that Kings move. And, of course, I'm like, yeah, I would do that too. <laughs> if I had that move, I yeah. would do it. So that I'm watching the Nationals, and uh, the, the clip one, 2004, you beat somebody, and you walk over, and you take uh, the mic from Denise Waddles, and you're like, stand up and let everyone know I'm the man. It's like, I think it's funny. It's Stand up. Everybody stand up. Oh, stand up. Whose house is this? Stand up immediately and applaud me like a king. Hey, Travis, bite me. Let's give those guys a hand. It it injects like, uh, you know, here's how I say. As the guy who's been in charge of Arm TV, I always try to make my clips. I like it that it's every couple of minutes something happens that raises the heartbeat of the video. It's like, Ooh. you know, I don't want it dead. I don't want a dead video. Like, that's the worst thing that can happen is dead. Like, everyone's dead, no life, no energy, no nothing. So when things happen that are interesting, I like it. So a guy like Travis Bajan helps create heartbeats. I told you he don't even want it. He don't even want it energies throughout the video and it keeps it interesting and that's and why you have no problem installing those heartbeats even if they come with what a conceited asshole yeah that you know what i mean because like you said for whatever reason the action is what you're involved in but if the action is being accented and it's a cocky version of it it you know it just creates emotion so i think that i'm trying to create emotion you're trying to capture emotion and then filter yeah. it in different parts of the show. So, but yeah, it like, is, we have to know that when there's a human emotion that comes from it, you know, it's either going to be positive or negative. And most of the time people focus on the, you know, they write the negative, they think about the positive. <laughs> so it's, yeah. uh, it's an interesting okay. situation. So there's another, there's another match uh, that I aired last night. It's Michael Todd. And he stops this guy, I, I think it was James Horn, and he goes, whoa, no, it's not going to happen, bam, whoa. And he's all, like, excited, and I'm like, it's over. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> you know, like I was just saying, it raises a heartbeat, bam, bam, bam. And, you know, someone commented, oh, I, I – even even back in 2004, Michael Todd was a douchebag. And it's like, what are you talking about? That makes it – is James Horn getting offended because Michael Todd is going, whoa? No, I mean, not at all. It's James Horn's neighbor and the leader of his fan club that's upset about it. But you're right. James Horn is not mad at all. He is an athlete. He is in his own bubble, not worried about what the hell Michael Todd's doing. However, why? yeah, human. I don't know why human beings are so quick to get so upset when they're when they they think that uh, their friend or loved one is being disrespected. I mean, I I'm not in the producer's uh, corner like in production, but I have to imagine that when they're cutting shows together, they like the same. They like that energy and that heartbeat. And they would, they want that, right? It's like 100%. You don't want athletes up there, no emotion, just not doing anything. Like it would never sell. Everyone Why? is trying to get, be on the highlight. Everyone's trying to capture the highlight. However, the highlight is oftentimes criticized by the people who didn't make the highlight. Crazy. It's weird. It's weird. I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, it's, just know that as a producer of Arm TV, the more you hoot and holler, the more people in the audience hoot and holler, the better it is. It makes it well, exciting. I mean, let's be completely honest. Right now, if you want to get an exclusive with Gary Roberts, 
go completely nuts at a tournament, he will then call you and ask you, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Are you on crack? <laughs> Are you depressed? <laughs> and then, boom! So, I got a feeling there's going to be a lot of great stuff happening in a tournament. We hope you like the content. Thanks for stopping by. Please leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe. Now click that little bell icon so you get notified. This was Gary Roberts and Travis Bajan live. Damn it! Do something up. Don't ever say them two names to me.